Solo mm-hmm. traveler is like a person who is in charge of his agenda and itinerary. Coming out of your comfort zone to do something that you wouldn't necessarily do normally. Hello, Julene. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I am doing great, actually. Um, it's nice and sunny outside, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> Well, you're in a good place you? to me because here it's been raining not just today, but the last week and probably next week. You know, it's it's typical British summer. Just gonna love it. You, you, you just gonna love. It. You're gonna have to live with it. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> um, but yeah. hopefully, I, I don't know. We're gonna be talking about uh, sunny things because you know, when we travel, it comes loneliness, and I'm really looking forward to hear what you have for us in store and how. <laughs> You're dealing with loneliness. You know, I get it that you travel solo a lot. Um, but before that, before we dig into the subject, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Now, where are you from? What are you doing? And all that kind of jazz. Yeah, sure. So I am originally from Jamaica. So you can kind of see my Jamaican flag in the background. Always have one. Um, and I, so I moved to the U.S. when I, after high school. So I moved to the U.S. for college. And I first actually started traveling seriously during my junior year of college. Um, I studied abroad in Europe. So I spent a semester in Italy and then I spent a semester in Hungary. And during that time, I also got to travel around a lot because of you know, budget travel airlines and stuff like that and trains. So it was really easy to travel. And because of that, I also traveled a lot solo because I just always wanted to be somewhere. <laughs> so that's how my like, real travel interest started and then since then i've been traveling around more and doing trips in the u.s and also outside of the u.s okay so what's your as a somebody who's from u.s and then you know it's been uh living and traveling around europe just a quick question what's your favorite destination in europe and why my (laughs) um (laughs) well actually I, i Usually that's a hard question for most travelers to answer, but I think that I do have an answer. And I think that Italy is definitely my favorite. Um, it was like the first country besides Jamaica that truly felt like home for me. Um, and I think that because it was so, the, well, I think because I started in the South where it's more low paced, um, there, I just found so many sim- similarities between Italian culture and Jamaican culture and like, the, the love for just like being happy and free and stuff like that. Um, so I, th- I think because I spent so much time in Italy, I really just fell in love. And it was my first country I really fell in love with. Hold on. <laughs> there is a, because I see the Jamaican flag as well behind you over there. Uh, so yeah. what is the similarity between Jamaica and Italy? It's just really like, like a nice love for like living, enjoying life, just, um, just loving the good things about life. Um, and I think because I was living in New York at the time as well, it was just, so like nice and slow paced um, in comparison to like the fast paced, busy lifestyle of New York. Um, and also because I was living close to like beach towns and stuff like that, it was nice to be able to um, reignite that love for just being able to go to the beach and stuff like that easily. Okay. And also great food. <laughs> yeah. Different types of food, but great food anyway. <laughs> And also Italy is all about, you know, getting together as a family, you know, the like big families mm-hmm. and big tables, have a lot of food. Is that the same in Jamaica as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, in Jamaica, especially on Sundays, there's Sunday dinner is a big, big thing or meals around holidays like Christmas. Like there's always a really big meal. Family comes over. My mother, a lot of people know my mother for baking like Christmas cakes and for types of cakes around that time. So it's just really good about connecting or even just visiting family in other parts of the country at that time. Wow, look at that. Look, what about that? You know, Italy and Jamaica are quite similar. <laughs> All right, interesting to know. So let's let's move to the subject then. Um, what are let, let's start straight away from the main thing. Like, what are your best tips, top tips to deal with loneliness when you travel in solo? Um, so some of my tips are for even before you start your trip and some for afterwards. So Ooh, before, even before you start your trip, not yeah. afterwards, during the trip. Sorry. Oh, okay. So even oh. before, <laughs> before the trip, I usually can, so I like to stay in hostels. Um, right now it might be harder because of the pandemic, but I used to travel a lot, especially in Europe. I think that there's a big hostel culture. It's really easy to just mm-hmm. find hostels, especially as a younger person. 
Um, and it's great for facilitating meeting new people, other solo travelers and stuff like that. So for example, the last hostel I stayed in was in New Orleans here in the US and I was traveling solo. And the first night I arrived, there, my hostel was giving a tour. And from there, I met like four or five other girls who were traveling solo. And I was in New Orleans for a week. And I think I spent about five of that, those seven days actually hanging out with them because we made that bond in, from the beginning and we just were exploring the area together. We went out to dinner. We went out to the cemeteries and stuff like that together. So choosing my... <laughs> Yeah, so New Orleans is known, like one of the touristy things to do in New Orleans is actually to go and visit their cemeteries because they're so intricate and detailed. Um, the way that they do their, I don't remember what the term is, the, the, the stones are so um, interesting. You get to see, it's a different type of, I guess, burial. <laughs> was that like the tombstones, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And the, um, I don't remember what the word is for like, the, the the burial places because they're usually like a raised above ground um so it's not so you get to see like the different family areas families buy different plots for their for, for their families and stuff like that what about that did you know that? okay new orleans famous for, for graveyards okay yeah cemetery <laughs> but yeah. here's the thing that the thing that you just described right you actually in a way didn't travel solo because you bonded with this girls mm -hmm. and you travel with them so is that happening all, all yeah. the time like you go solo not, and you always. Make friends quickly? not necessarily sometimes it's, it depends on the hostel or depends on when you're traveling sometimes i'll spend most of the trip alone and then maybe i'll the last night i'll meet somebody and, and we go to dinner for that one night or like maybe i'll somebody and we only hung out hang out one time because we have different itineraries or like they've been there before so they've already been to the places but we just meet up with whatever like we have similar interests regarding so if we want to like for example when I was in Napoli one for a week once there was one night when there was a girl staying in my room and we went out to dinner together um and then because I was studying Italian she needed help with like navigating something in the area to get a new phone. So like we just hung out for a day and then our schedules diverged and we went back to our separate plans. I see, okay. But so in a way you're traveling solo, but you wouldn't mind mm -hmm. bonding with other people. Okay, I tried solo to be fair. I really, I really tried because I, I was curious, like, okay, you know, solo people are saying that you should try, you should try it. I'm like, I'm the type of person that I want to try things at least once because how will I not how yeah. will I know if I don't like them if I don't try them so I tried solo yeah. but I didn't go to a hostel I went to what's that website couch surfing I use couch surfing mm -hmm. and I bonded with the host so much and the guy was yeah. was great because he was loving history I was asking him questions yeah. he was like yeah this this is like that so I actually ended up spending a lot of time with him he actually took a day off to show me around so it was uh -huh. great so I realized as well it's solo it's, it's it's not it's not the type it's not a thing for me to go somewhere around and just browse around by myself yeah. I, I, I want people but it's good to try it around around so um, yeah and another thing I want to point out about traveling solo is that because just because you're traveling to a destination by yourself and you're generally your plans are for yourself doesn't mean that you're going to spend all of your time by yourself like you can meet people there um and maybe hang out with them for a day or two or like maybe even hang out with them for most of the time that you're there but in, the, in general like your trip was your own and you can always like just go back to your own plans or stick with them um and it just opens your world to being able to make more friends because you're alone people are more likely to like you're not going to stick with your own group you're going to try to make friends in different areas that you are that's very interesting because it's not like uh somebody comes to you like hey is this seat taken like can i have a drink here like i no, actually i'm traveling solo <laughs> i don't want to have any interactions <laughs> at all <laughs> yeah exactly exactly like if you go to an area and you were to meet somebody who's from the area yeah and you hang out with them you still traveled solo and you went there and you made friends with that person maybe you hung out with them a couple of times or maybe you made a friend for life but yeah it's that's, a, that's, very in, so. that's very interesting that you started with that tip because as you say solo travel straight away you know in my mind and i would imagine most people's minds you imagine 
one person, solo person, and then that's mm -hmm. it, right? He got taking pictures by himself. But yeah. <laughs> but so you straight away flip my my understanding. Like solo traveler, it's like a person who is in charge of his agenda and itinerary. Yeah, really well done. Okay, so yeah. that's the first tip. Go to yeah. hostels. Plus, it's cheaper than hotels or yeah. Airbnb. Okay, so yeah, another, another tip then. Um, and I guess like one thing to expound. I know you brought up the Airbnb thing. And that's another that's another way to um also plan something that you're not completely alone if you want to choose airbnbs where you're staying in a private room and you have the host that might you might have that interaction and also be able to get recommendations from that person which is what, what happened during one of my trips to hawaii in march because i ended up staying in a private room but i was doing my own thing during the day but at night i'd end up interacting with my host and we talk about different things in Hawaii or like how to, like what she recommended me doing. And then in terms of a second recommendation, something that, so I'm in a lot of Facebook groups um, regarding travel. So usually when I'm planning a trip, I usually post in those groups asking for recommendations, but I also ask, is anybody from the area or is anybody like have um, gonna be in the area at the time and want to meet up for maybe lunch or some kind of activity. And sometimes, most times it doesn't really work out that schedules overlap, but sometimes it does. And I look out in that I can go go to a meal with somebody or go go exploring a different area with somebody else. Okay. So ask ask around. That's good. So you, you I, I see straight away. I understand what, what, what's yeah. happening here because it's you, you, you're not somebody yeah. who's avoiding direction. You just want to be the boss. Yeah. And you're like, okay, yeah. I talked to you, I met you. Thank you for the tip, but you're not that my you're not my kind of a person. I'm gonna continue my journey alone. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah, and you're you're also not waiting. You're not waiting for your friends or your family to be ready to travel. So if you want to travel for the holidays and everybody else wants to stay home, like uh -huh. it's fine for you to be okay. I'm gonna go on this trip by myself. I know, like I I'm my own person. I don't have to wait for everybody else to be ready um to travel as well that's great okay perfect uh another tip another tip um when i'm so this one is more so for when you're actually in the place so one thing i do um dating apps are great for also making friends or um if you want more that's also an option so usually i'll what i'll do when i'm in a new place is i'll change my bio and i'll be like in hawaii for until xyz date um anyone want to meet up or anyone want to go to lunch or anyone want to go to the beach with me and like it's worked out sometimes and it's been like had great experiences like for example recently i was in hawaii and i was able to meet up with a couple people while i was there so i went to the beach with one person i went out to dinner with that same person a couple times as well um i went to like a bar with somebody else like so i and, and also because they are there usually they're like either locals or um people who like um move to that area they know more about like more the local spots more the like um hole in the wall spots as well so get like more of a kind of an authentic experience meeting up with people who are from that area oh very good very good tip yeah and yeah. Uh, of course as you said if you want something else as well uh great addition yeah uh, that's also an option great addition okay how many tips you've got for us by the way because i keep asking like next tip next tip uh just out of curiosity do you know how many you've got <laughs> Um, I think at, at least five. <laughs> at least five. Okay, good. So I, what... at least I think at least one more that's come to my mind. Yeah. Okay, so, so what's the um, one that's on your mind? Another one I recommend. So, so if you a lot of times when you go to restaurants, um, because you're by yourself, especially if it's in a busy time, restaurants will normally want to maybe place you to sit at the bar or um somewhere where you're not taking as much space. And having traveled a lot, I actually prefer that because one, it's not as awkward. You're not sitting at a table by yourself while everybody else around you is in their little groups or couples. But two, you get to like possibly interact with the bartender. Um, if they're not too busy, most bartenders will be talking with you, interacting with you. You get to learn about like their experiences, how they end up where they are, um, like if they moved there or if they're originally from the area and again also get recommendations from them about things to do or places to go to so i'm always like just i think more so lately at the beginning i wasn't like this but once i started doing it more often i found myself constantly like 
actually initiating conversation with people, um, being more outgoing, which isn't really like something I say I am, but like just learning to talk to people more and asking questions and just like learning more about them as well. Okay, now that you mentioned that, you know, going to sit and talk to the barman, I just thought about a couple of tips as well, but I'm going to give them at the end. And I just want to hear, I just want to hear your list first. Do you you have another one? You said five. So that was number four. Okay. What's what's number five? Um, Well, the other one, the last one is probably just, again, being outgoing. So if you go to an area, um, actually, if you go out, like one thing I did once when I went out to, I went to like a wine bar to do a tasting because I like to do I like to go to wineries and like go and do tastings um and once I was in Sonoma County which is like a wine area in California and they were so busy that like they were just they had a long wait list and I was by myself and I saw that there was one other person who was by themselves so to make it more to make it easier for the person trying to get like turn over tables as I if it's fine if this person's interested like I'm fine sharing a table with them and we can just do our tasting together. And that worked out great because like we, like I had conversation with that person. It worked out for the wine bar because they didn't have to seat two separate tables. And it was, it actually ended up being really fun and like the interaction was great with that person as well. So being outgoing and maybe identifying somebody else who's traveling by themselves and maybe starting for conversation um, might not work out, but it might also work out. <laughs> you never know. So basically you're saying make the first step, don't wait for the other ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Being willing to like step outside of your comfort zone mm. and make the first step. Because that's what Which solo is like tra- a big Yeah, that's what solo travel is about. Like you're learning about yourself, you're growing, yeah. and you're also being able to like explore like who you are. And I think that's why I love solo travel so much, because it's helped me to like come out of my shell and like do things I wouldn't normally do, especially like where I live. I probably wouldn't do that anywhere in, in my surrounding area. But like one of the things is like you're in this area, the person will probably never see you again. So yeah. if, it, if it's like awkward, you don't have to deal with it like afterwards, anything like that. So it's fine. <laughs> That's one of the tips I always say to people who are shy, you know, especially, you know, I live in London. I'm saying like London is massive. It's huge. You know, you get ashamed of some situation or something, you're probably never going to see that person ever yeah. again. Let it go. Okay, great. Thanks for the five tips yeah. here. When you were talking about the barman, yeah. like something came to my mind straight away. Let me share it quickly. Yeah. So, tip yeah. number one. So, the whole, in general, the tip is to find what your interests are. So, yesterday I, I was recording a podcast with a DJ who the lady, when she, go, when she travels around, she goes to record stores. Mm-hmm. So once she collects records, uh, vinyls, but she also talks to the people over there, right? And she also said, mm-hmm. whenever I see somebody with a t-shirt on the street with a certain band, I start to talk to them. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. But but what I do... I actually do. Yeah, go on. I actually do something similar. Whenever I see anybody, with, especially with like Jamaican and Caribbean people, whenever I see someone wearing like a Jamaican flat, Jamaican themed shirt, I'll be like, hey! like i'm from jamaica too blah 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 and start up a conversation with them or, or like ask them where they're, where in jamaica they're from or which caribbean island and stuff like that so yeah oh, that's beautiful that's beautiful yeah uh, i always that for that reason i designed a custom t-shirt for myself it says hashtag ask me anything <laughs> and sometimes oh, and sometimes people jump into my uh what's the capital of azerbaijan <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like and i'm like what well it says on your t-shirt i even forget i'm wearing the t-shirt well it says on your t-shirt you know ask me anything like, ah okay gotcha. uh, it worked on several occasions so th- that's what the lady does she goes to record stores what i do is because i, I really like history mm-hmm. i go to walking tours and then i mm-hmm. not only speak to the guide after the after the tour i stay and speak mm-hmm. to the guide but i also uh as we, I don't know if you've been to a walking tour, but you go to one location, yeah. and the guy is da, 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 and then you start walking to the next mm-hmm. location. And as I'm yeah. walking, I'm usually talking to other people. So most of the times I, I bound with some people and then we go for drinks and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, numerous, numerous, numerous options uh, not to be alone if you, yeah. you know, uh, want to interact with people. If so, you want. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's this, that's um, similar to what I was saying in terms of my first tip. Like the, this one, the walking tour was hosted by my hostel. But sometimes you just need to Google walking tour yeah. in 
London or walking tour. And like, as you said, between each location, the guide isn't necessarily going to be talking. So you have that time to maybe look around who's around you and be like, hey, like, whatever. Or like, what did they just say? Or like, what are you, like, how long have you been here? And stuff like that. And yeah. that's like, that's how I made those friendships with those girls that I talked to mm-hmm. in New Orleans. Because we were talking between each location and like sharing our different, like we had all just arrived as well. So we were all like, what are you going to do while you're here? And we found that we had similar interests. And so we made plans together. <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, in those walking tours, if you Google it, the most of the walking tours are free. You just donate something at the end, whatever you wish. Uh, yeah, in, in those walking tours, trip. yeah, it's easy to to you know separate the people. Like, oh, this guy's alone. That's a couple. These are a group of group, yeah. of, group of free people, and then you can even you know to your liking. You can yeah. places. But now, as we're talking, I even in my mind came uh, mm-hmm. wine tasting. You can just go to a wine tasting event and talk to the other people if you are or a food tour, whatever it is, like yeah, your interest. Yeah, um, or like group activities. So for example, when I was in Hawaii recently, I did two two things I signed up for individually. I signed up for like a circle island tour, which is where they there's a bus and they drive you around. And I of course was the only one I was the only one on the bus that was alone. But like the, all the people on the bus were also really nice. So even if you're not making plans to meet them afterwards, you have that interaction while you're on that tour. And it was a an all day tour. So I was like talking with them. I had lunch, like we stopped for lunch and there was like a mother and son sitting and I was like, can I join you at your table? And I sat and ate my lunch with them. Or even I did like a scuba diving lesson thing and I didn't really interact with the people I was doing that scuba diving lesson with as much, but I like had that that in-person time where the guide was giving like making jokes and we were all laughing together. And even again, we didn't make plans afterwards, but we had that 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 time where it was like I wasn't just by myself doing something. <laughs> Beautiful. That was a great conversation. Uh, thanks for that. Can you close it with a sentence or two? Just wrap it up or sum it up, summarize it or whatever you feel like. Yeah. yeah, like I like you said, I definitely recommend everybody to try tra- solo travel at least once. You might, I think you'd probably fall in love with it. Even like if you're traveling as a group, I definitely recommend like being able, being flexible to be like, okay, the group wants to do this, but I want to do this. I can go off on my own for a day or for half a day and do something by myself it's really great to just like experience that independence and like coming out of your comfort zone to do something that you wouldn't necessarily do normally beautiful you wrapped it up great and there is nothing else i i can say to that so it was great thanks so much for joining us for this call it was amazing thanks so much for sharing your tips and i wish you a fantastic day over there thanks on the other me. side of the ocean <laughs> thank you thank you for having me enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> stay dry <laughs>